One quarter of the growing homeless population in Niagara is of Indigenous ancestry. Today that issue is being discussed by the Niagara Aboriginal Working Group on Homelessness. We know the need across the province of Ontario is enormous and that's no different here in Niagara. There's a huge disproportionate representation of people experiencing homelessness that are Indigenous. So today we're, we're here trying to offer our service delivery expertise, uh, but we need, the, we need the help of, of multiple partners, including the province and the federal government, to make new housing a reality. Those in attendance were able to learn about the issue of homelessness from someone who experienced it directly. And working at the Canadian Observatory on Homelessness. Jesse Thistle's journey has taken him from the streets to the faculty at York University, where he continues to be an advocate on the issue of Indigenous homelessness. There's a lot, a lot more going on than just, um, you know, a regular Canadian who's lost their home. There's historic drivers that are impacting that Indigenous person that leads to their homelessness today. And that's what we're seeing in our streets, right? The loss of land, uh, overcrowding conditions on reserve. People have to travel to and from over vast geographic distances to access health and education that, you know, these infrastructures are in place in cities and a lot of indigenous people come from far away just to get those and in the process they become homeless and so we see, see that a lot, right? And I know that indigenous agencies traditionally don't get the lion's share, even though the lion's share of homeless people are indigenous. So why wouldn't, uh, then I'm talking about across the country, not just here in Niagara. So why doesn't the lion's share of money go to indigenous service providers who already understand what I've talked about here today? So why do we give it to the YMCA or Salvation Army? Why doesn't it just go to the indigenous service providers directly? I think that's the issue. I think really if we focused on making that happen cleanly, without like bureaucratic barriers, we'd see an immediate change in the way that we're addressing indigenous homelessness on the ground. Here in Niagara, we are five years into a homelessness action plan. Those in attendance received an update on where things stand. Not everyone struggles equally in a really tight housing market. The indigenous community members, uh, that would be one group that uh, significantly struggles. So we know that core housing need uh, in Niagara is 13.3%, uh, but among uh, indigenous uh, households in Niagara, it's significantly higher than that, almost double that. As Jesse mentioned, um, there, there's uh, a challenge in engaging because mainstream service providers are not Indigenous service providers and mainstream uh, approaches to housing and homelessness uh, may not be appropriate for Indigenous uh, community members. Uh, so we need Indigenous design solutions informed by Indigenous people and organizations. And so part of this update is to find out how can we do that better in the next five years and what does that look like and get the voice of our community partners uh, who are Indigenous uh, to inform that for the region. In St. Catharines reporting for The Source, I'm Andrew Thompson.